This video is part 3 of the Biochemistry Board Exam Series. Number 21. What are the two most abundant heme proteins in humans? Okay, so the answer to this one is A, hemoglobin and myoglobin. So from the word itself, heme proteins are a group of proteins that contain heme as a prosthetic group. So the role of the heme group depends on the specific protein. So for example, the heme group of cytochrome oxidase is an electron carrier, while the heme group of the enzyme catalase is part of the active site of the enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. And in the case of hemoglobin and myoglobin, the heme group serves to reversibly bind to oxygen. Number 22. The complex protoporphyrin-9 and ferrous iron is termed as... Okay, so the answer to this one is A, heme. So heme is a complex of protoporphyrin-9 and ferrous iron. So, Fe2+. As mentioned in the previous question, heme is the prosthetic group for heme proteins. As you can see in the picture below, the iron is in the center of the heme molecule and bondage to the four nitrogens of the porphyrin ring. So, one, two, three, four. And as you can see, said, the heme iron can form two additional bonds, one on each side. So, this binds to histidine and this is where oxygen binds to so that's why we say hemoglobin and myoglobin are oxygen carriers number 23 what is the heme protein found in heart and skeletal muscle which functions both as a reservoir for oxygen and as an oxygen carrier that increases the rate of transport of oxygen within the muscle cell Okay, the answer to this one is B, myoglobin. Number 24. This is found exclusively in red blood cells, where its main function is to transport oxygen from the lungs to the capillaries of the tissues. The answer to this one is D, hemoglobin. So now let's compare myoglobin and hemoglobin. So myoglobin and hemoglobin are both oxygen carriers. However, myoglobin has only one subunit, meaning isa lang din yung oxygen na makapag-bind. Hemoglobin, on the other hand, has four subunits, so four oxygen molecules. And these have different locations. Myoglobin is found in the heart and skeletal muscles, while hemoglobin is found exclusively in the red blood cells. Number 25. The major hemoglobin in adults comprising of four polypeptide chains held together by non-covalent interactions. Okay, so the answer to this one is A, hemoglobin A. So as you can see here in the table, these are the different types of hemoglobins in normal adults. So hemoglobin F is the major hemoglobin in the fetus. And this actually has higher affinity to oxygen compared to HbA. Why? Para mas mataas yung oxygen transfer from the circulation sa mother across the placenta to the red blood cells of fetus. So mas madaming oxygen ang matatanggap sa baby. However, pag naging adult na, maging minor hemoglobin lang tong HBF. HBA2 naman, this is also another minor hemoglobin. And this first appears shortly before birth and ultimately constituting about 2% of the total hemoglobin. And HBA1C, my glucose nakaattach dito. And dahil dyan, ginagamit to assess average blood glucose levels in persons with diabetes. 26. 
These are hereditary hemolytic diseases in which an imbalance occurs in the synthesis of globin chains. Okay, so the answer to this one is B, thalassemias. So, if we recall, hemoglobin has four subunit chains. Dalawang alpha chain and dalawang beta chain. So, alpha and beta chains. So, normally, the synthesis of the alpha and beta globin chains I coordinated. So, every alpha globin chain has a partner na beta globin. However, in the case of thalassemias, may problema sa paggawa ng either of the alpha or beta globin chains. So, kung ang alpha ang may problema, it is called alpha thalassemias. Likewise, sa beta naman, beta thalassemias. Number 27. Oxidation of the heme component of hemoglobin to the ferric iron state forms... Okay, so the answer to this one is B, methemoglobin. So normally, the heme component in hemoglobin is in the ferrous state, so Fe2+. However, kapag na-oxidize yan, it becomes ferric. And kapag yung heme component maging ferric state, hindi yan makapag-bind ng oxygen. So this is now methemoglobin. And if you recall sa toxi, we treat this with methylene blue. Because this reduces ferric to ferrous. Number 28. Collagen and elastin are examples of... Okay, the answer to this one is A, fibrous proteins. Para hindi kayo makonfuse, yung fibrous proteins, magkaiba yun sa globular proteins. Yung discussion natin kanina na hemoglobin and myoglobin, these are globular proteins. So, the obvious difference between fibrous proteins from globular proteins is the shape. So, yung fibrous proteins, the polypeptide chains are parallel to each other which forms a fiber shape. Globular proteins, on the other hand, their polypeptide chains fold into each other, so it looks spherical. Number 29. What is the most abundant protein in the human body? So the answer to this one is C, collagen. So aside the skin, Skin and hair, it is also in the extracellular matrix and in the vitreous humor sa eye. It is also in tendons, cornea sa eye, and in bones din. Number 30. Fibril forming collagens except So the answer to this one is D. Type 4. So collagen is organized into three groups based on their location and function sa body. And under each group, there are types. So for group 1, the fibril forming collagen, sila yung my rope-like structure na describe ganina for a typical collagen molecule. So under these types are type 1, 2, and 3. For network forming naman, so instead of forming fibrils, they form a mesh. So under this is type 4 and 7. So my mnemonic for this one is network 47. And lastly, yung fibril associated collagen, these bind to the surface of collagen fibrils. So maglink na yung fibrils to one another and also to other components sa extracellular mat matrix. Number 31. Which of the following pairs is correct about collagen types? Okay, so the answer to this one is C, fibril forming collagen. So to review, fibril forming is types 1, 2, and 3. Network forming is types 4 and 7. And fibril associated types 9 and 12. And lastly, number 32, 
Collagen is rich in blank and blank, both of which are important in the formation of the triple-stranded helix. The answer to this one is C, proline and glycine. So collagen, as stated, is rich in proline and glycine. As you can see here, proline facilitates the formation sa helical conformation of each alpha chain because its ring structure causes kinks in the peptide chain. So glycine naman, which is the smallest amino acid, is found in every third position of the polypeptide chain. So here, small one, these are glycine. So as you can see, they're very small and they fit into the restricted spaces where the three chains of the helix come together. So the glycine residues are part of a repeating sequence, which is gly x y. So X is frequently proline, while Y naman, it is hydroxyproline, or pwede din hydroxylysine. Okay, so that's it for part 3. Thank you for watching.